Hey guys, this is you, really, and this is a video specifically talking about the Blight Necromancer. The Blight reveal was yesterday. Um, I was planning on releasing a video earlier, but um, one, I realized it was going to be way too long uh, if I just try to cover everything in one go, and two, I ended up with a giant headache, so uh, that got delayed. So uh, Blight looks pretty cool. Uh, I have a lot of thoughts about that. It's uh, I think people are overreacting to the tower defense stuff uh, and hating on it way too quickly. But um, yeah, either way, uh, that's not what I want to focus on with this video. Obviously, what most people probably know that I'm excited about is the Necromancer stuff. Um, there is going to be a rework of the Necromancer Ascendancy, which is great. Um, Zombies, skellies, and zom uh, and specters are going to scale better with level now, which is awesome. We're going to get an additional bar of skill bindings, which is awesome, and we're getting a new golem, which uh, buffs and is buffed by non-golem minions, which I'm very, very interested in how that's going to work, how much the buff is going to actually do, and yeah. But um, most of what I want to go over is like. Not only the Necromancer changes, but what I'm hoping for minions in general. Also, there's going to be a new base type wand for minions, which is honestly great. Um, but I wanted to go over what I'm hoping for for minions in general. So they're adding support gems that allow you to change minion behavior, which allows you to have aggressive, normal, or more fine-tuned like defensive minions, basically. And honestly, that's pretty much the best you could ask for right now. Um, threshold jewels would have been bad because jewels are pretty, pretty uh, competitive right now with the threshold jewels that we already have, as well as ghastly eye jewels being very important for minion stats. And there's a lot of minion stats that you really, really want on jewels in general. And usually you end up having to sacrifice a few in the end in order to get um, everything fit, uh, fit in while still having decent defense yourself. And yeah. And I wanted to go into that a little bit because one of the main concerns for me with playing minion builds right now is that not only is the player defenses a little bit of a questionable thing, but also your minions defenses are a questionable thing. Getting elemental resistances on your minions is actually quite hard. There's very few sources of it right now. Um, multiple sources of them are just things you almost never want to have to use because they mean less damage or less of other things. So generally speaking, most of the time when you see somebody playing a minion build, they're going to be taking these two nodes because they're the only sources of elemental resistance nodes on the tree that isn't just a jewel socket or from an ascendancy. And this will put your minions up to 55 LE res because they have 40% default, generally speaking. And obviously, that's not really ideal. You want them to be capped. Um, Commander of Darkness helps, but sometimes, like in the case where you have to use War Banner in order to um, give them an aura or whatever, sometimes this really isn't ideal and the aura range isn't enough to really cover them well because things like Pride and Blasphemy Curses don't count for this. So, um, yeah. Outside of that, there's a few other ways to get elemental resistances on your minions. One is obviously the minion and totem elemental um, resistance support gem, which has a very small amount of damage and obviously doesn't give any damage to a pure physical minion or like a pure chaos minion or whatever. It's As a damage support, it is very, very weak, even for elemental builds. So... Really not an ideal gem to end up using. You have Purity of Elements, which obviously you kind of don't really want to use. You could use the three Purities as well, which actually will give extra defenses on top of giving resistances. But that's three auras. Come on, there's no way. And then you're not, like, how are you going to run anything else for auras? Because auras are such a central part of minions in general. Um, and then... You've got Spirit Offering, which is just something that you never really want to have to use. Because minion movement speed is so important, 
Um, minion movement speed just means that they're going to react faster. Just speed modifiers in general mean that they're going to react faster, get to targets faster, stay caught up with you way better than before, so on and so forth. They're going to fall back faster. Just overall, it gives you better control. Every single little bit of movement speed that you can get on minions, as long as they're not capping out, is gigantic. And so, minion movement speed uh, is just too strong, and flash offering is just so important for minions at this point that it's pretty hard to ever consider spirit offering over that. Bone offering even has more for that, but that's because of like player defenses and block and all of that. So, you know. Even for the minions themselves, bone offering isn't really that amazing because it's not a percentage of health restored, it's a flat amount. And like, say on a Spectre, wow, you, you restored 500 of their life out of their 55,000. Wow, that's not even 1%. Damn. So, yeah. Anyways, that aside, the, the last part is jewels, and as I mentioned, jewels are very competitive. Um, you can only have two suffixes per jewel, but the suffixes that you would potentially want, blind, taunt, hinder, damage, minion attack and cast speed, um, maybe even like minion regen or minion leech, um, you have, and then you have like the resistances, maybe even minion life, um, and there's some other things too that I can't come up with on the top of my head, things like stats, like dex or strength. Things like um, resistances for yourself so that you can stay capped resistances. Overall, they're just really, really competitive. Um, and even, oh yeah, and also minion movement speed. So there's a lot of suffixes on um, jewels that the resistances really compete with. So I'd really, really like to see the ability to cap minion resistances, especially outside of the Necromancer class. Um, be way more accessible because right now it is there's not a lot of options especially even on gearing like there is not a lot of gear that gives resistances to minions overall so like on my baron zombie build i the only way they were ever capped on resistances was with the war banner if they were in the war banner radius um so sometimes they would just randomly like all die to a templar pack in legion and like just blow up even with having 25k life and five percent over five percent regen plus some plus some uh leech a little bit so uh yeah and not to mention that if they ever get cursed it's not even just that they struggle to get to cap resistances you can't even like really do anything about curses on them curses on minions are a major problem so minion defense is overall just i'd really like to see more support for that especially when you consider the fact that something like zombies right now my zombie build in order to recast the zombies was really really rough they cost like 360 mana in order to recast them and how in the hell are you ever supposed to have that much mana in order to recast it while using auras like uh, it is very frustrating um Outside of that, yeah. Other things for the defenses. Leech never got any love ever since the Leech changes way long ago. It's just been pretty much untouched. There's no way to get minion Leech speed outside of, like, gem. And that's it. And that's really shitty because, like, Leech... Like, unless the minions are hitting really fast or really rapidly or aren't against single target and just doing a lot of AoE damage at once, they're not going to Leech like fast at all they're not going to get a lot of leech instances going so i'd like to see maybe leech get addressed i think because right now as it stands regen just ends up being generally speaking the better method of sustaining your minions at this point so yeah Player defenses are also a thing. Like, I was always taking zombies on necromancers because necromancers just lack the defenses to survive. And I was using Molten Shell on every single one of those builds because, um, well, Legion was pretty dangerous and Val Molten Shell was very good. 
but um like the only defensive thing you have really other than like bone offering which again not ideal is flesh binder for fizz damage reduction which was really nice but like that being it is eh. It's so easy to die on minion builds. It's so hard to get the life pools that you need. And then when you try to combine that with keeping your minions alive as well, while having them get, do good damage, it's just a lot of things to combine all together. So yeah, defenses in general just need addressment, addressing. The other thing I'd like to see, another thing I'd like to see for minions is impale support. Uh, there was not enough, like impale was added last patch. Um, it was pretty good on melee builds, but uh, on minion builds, it, like, it was okay at best. Um, required a lot of investment to really make it do anything, and then at that point, again, your your defenses were trash. So, um, Impale didn't really work out on minions in general, unfortunately. Um, I would have liked to see some more Impale minion stuff, like zombies and dancing duo and such, because could be really cool um and because there's so many of them um there's a lot of potential there it's also kind of hard to say because like i'm pretty sure your hits are gonna waste their impales so like you can't use something like storm Brand because it's gonna waste impale stacks and if you really want those impale stacks for things like the champion aura effect really really rough but i would have liked to see something like champion dancing duo be a thing uh but yeah, that's a pretty straightforward one. Impale support for minions would be great. The last thing is that Necromantic Aegis, I would really like to see it be moved to a better spot, but um, at the same point, before I go more into why I hate the spot for Necromantic Aegis, I would actually like to see Frenzy Charges be nerfed on minions and monsters. Um, Frenzy Charges are way too good for them right now. It gives 45, like three charges on minions and monsters give 45% attack speed, 45% cast speed, 15% movement speed, as well as the 12% more damage. That's kind of insane. And it makes Necromantic Aegis basically only use Victoria's Charity. Like, that's it. You, you, you really don't care about anything else. And that, to me, is just silly. It really ruins Necromantic Aegis as a keystone in general. Um... And so I would actually like to see the Frenzy Charges be nerfed. I think the other charges are kind of all right. Endurance Charges are really, like, almost impossible to build on minions, which is why I didn't mention them for the Elemental Resistances, because free Endurance Charges would actually give them 45 Ellie Res and give them a lot of tank. So that would actually be one way to fix that, is to have them be able to get Endurance Charges. But there's just really not a good way to give, give them Endurance Charges or have them get it. Um, power charge is kind of whatever. Um, crit minions haven't really been a thing. It's really hard to get good crit multi on them in general, so. <clears throat> yeah. Other than that, the positioning of Necromantic Aegis is just really bad because it's in a spot that has, like, no life. These three life nodes are just worse than three five percents. And, uh, melding is only good for hybrid, really. And generally speaking, you don't really want to go an ES build while going Necromatic Aegis because the shield is a very large source of your ES. So, yeah, just overall, um, Necromatic Aegis is just in one of the most awkward spots on the tree right now, and I'd really like to see it be moved somewhere to the left side more. Somewhere where there's actually more life, where you could actually use it and consider it an option would be awesome, because right now it's just bad. It's, it, it costs so much to get to it. It's like... Mm, it already has enough of a downside as, as it is of you not being able to use a shield for yourself and be giving up your block. But yeah, other than that, the, uh, the skill bindings are great, though. Um, I'm glad we're getting more skill bindings. Outside of that... The only things I would really like to see for minions, I'd like to see Dancing Duo be buffed, especially because Multi-Strike um, got hit for it. Uh, Dancing Duo never actually repeats, so it never gets the damage bonus of Multi-Strike, so Multi-Strike is basically just like a dead link now. It basically just procs things uh, on hit effects faster, 
and that's it. Doesn't actually give any damage, pretty much. So I'd really hope to see Dancing Duo be buffed, not to mention its AoE is kind of shitty now. Um, and uh, Herald of Agony is still good, and that's concerning to me. But, yeah. Anyways, outside of that, there is one more thing that I want to mention, uh, talking about Necromancer. Um, which is the gloves. These gloves are insane. I've been wanting an item like this for a long time. I just wish they had a little bit more on them in terms of general stats like life or ES or even dexterity or resist something. Like even just 30 to 50 life would be really, really nice because the gloves are a very competitive spot. You've got command of the pit there. You've got grip of the council and you've got even just rares with dex, resistances, life, and minion damage, even crafted minion damage, so on and so forth. And so losing a little bit of defensiveness for this is just kind of unfortunate, but these gloves are awesome. I really have wanted something like this in the game for a while. Um, for fire damage, uh, obviously the first thing people think of is SRS, although you generally want to go more cold conversion for SRS because that means you're going to get more beneficial sides of the hatred. I would probably go like one red, three green for SRS, simply because you can run generosity, hatred, and the other two green sockets should be pretty simple to fill out. Something like haste, either unsupported or supported by generosity, and something like even just dash or desecrate, and that would be good. And you also have... Um, for pure fire, you have Arendelle's Embrace Scepter, which is the which gives Summon Skeletons Avatar of Fire. And the problem with giving them Avatar of Fire was there was no way to full convert the rest of the physical damage to to uh, fire. Now you can actually do that with these gloves, which is awesome. Um, hit based with that scepter could be a thing. Um, they cover enemies in Ash. This could allow skeletons to be a single target supplement for something like solar guards. And just overall, it's, it gives um, Avatar Fire Skeletons way more potential to be used as a hit thing instead of just using the scepter for something like popcorn skeletons where they blow up with minion instability. Really, really like that. Uh, lightning, I'll skip over cold and chaos for a sec. Uh, lightning, I could see you doing f full cold or full lightning phantasms uh, alongside slave drivers for really good clear as well as really good single target phantasms. Do really decent clear with soul rest, but um, generally die really easily and. Uh, it was really hard to get them to do good elemental damage and sc or scale their physical and just overall they didn't really synergize very well with a lot of minions um, outside of the cold ones which we'll get to in a second but with these gloves they're able to synergize element uh, with elemental minions way better uh, so you can cover their weakness of single target and keeping them alive on single target with another minion such as slave driver specters for lightning which is awesome I really, really love that. Um, Cold and Chaos both have potential. Both also really good for occultist minion stuff. Um, cold, uh, cold Phantasms are scary because Hatred is a very, very, very good um, aura if you're full converting physical to cold. Um, it's also worth m n mentioning that Phantasms use spells, so you get Zealotry as well. And then you can also use uh, Frost Sentinels, Projectile Weakness for more projectile damage, Frost Bomb for Cold Exposure, Avatar Fire so that you never have to worry about what your hits are doing for Equilibrium, and you also have something like even Cold Snap Bone Chill as an option to increase the cold damage that they take as well. There's so many debuffs for cold damage overall, and there's so many reasons to go cold damage. The only problem you're going to run into with a Frost Sentinel Phantasm build is, well, there's two problems. One, running everything that you want to run, and two, being able to see anything on the screen going on at a single time, because there is a lot of projectiles that end up happening. <laughs> Seriously, it's crazy. 
Uh, but the build's going to be really, really powerful. I will promise you that. Chaos is the next one. Uh, again, wither the wither debuffs in general, especially withering touch, are very good. So the main minions here are Dancing Duo, Arakali, Arakali's Fang, the uh, unique dagger. The spiders from that uh, do Viper Strike and have some Chaos Damage bonus stuff and also Poison. And obviously Herald of Agony. Herald of Agony already has some conversion, so now you'll be able to full convert it to Chaos. Uh, you'll might maybe if they buff Spirit Offering or make it more uh, attractive to use in general, maybe Spirit Offering will actually see some use with this too. Um, Unholy Might from like Vis Mortis, although that's conditional. Um, just over, there, there's a lot of things you can do with this. Um, and yeah. Dancing Duo plus Herald of Agony is a really, really good combo. And it's also worth noting all three of the minions that I mentioned are um, all minions that either don't die, like from their life hitting zero, or they only die from like duration ending, or just very rarely die, which is Dancing Duo. Because Dancing Duo almost should never die with this setup, with uh, Conversion to Chaos. Because uh, the only cases where they die, they basically have like 99% damage reduction to everything and basically have like 10k life. So if you have the slightest bit of regen, they almost never die. Uh, the only case where I've ever seen it die was like, it was spinning on a gigantic pack and it couldn't kill a cannot die um, totem. And it eventually just reflected itself to death, so yeah. Um, it's also going to be kind of hard to get four white sockets on this, but, uh, should be pretty good. Obviously, there's going to be more options here, something like zombies, skellies, things like that. But, uh, those are the standout ones for me, uh, especially because Dancing Duo scales really well with flat damage, especially things like added Chaos Gem, so, and also is able to inflict Withering Touch quite often. Just overall, it could be really interesting. Even just using Kadava Heralds to help uh, clear or single target could be nice with this. I'm really looking forward to these gloves. I'm so happy that they added something like it because it's one of the most build enabling items they've added for minions overall in the game. This dagger works for Herald of Agony. I, I'm kind of upset about it. I'm worried about Herald of Agony being broken again. and. I don't understand this card being added, considering I don't even know where Dark Dreams even drops, and everybody I've, I've asked is like, yeah, I have no idea either. I've only gotten it from stack decks or like the random card drops. So, I don't if if nobody knows where Dark Dreams drops, how how in the world are we supposed to find this one? Like, ugh, fucking hell. I don't know about it. Outside of that, yeah. Um, I was going to go over the amulet passives, but I'll save that for another time because uh, this video is already 23 minutes long, and so I don't want to go on for too long. Basically, uh, mini defenses, really hope they're addressed. Hopefully, we don't have to worry too much about the uh, player defenses as well because that was a major problem too. I had to go through so many loops and bounds to get, through, to get on the player defenses. And... Uh, yeah. Impale support support for minions would be great, especially if it enables something like champion minions, which is a class that I would really like to see be a good minion class, because inspirational plus master of metal plus fortitude would be really, really cool. Um, Necro Aegis, I'd like to see it be moved to a better spot, but I'd also like to see uh, Victoria's Charity not be so ridiculously good on minion builds because it's because Frenzy Charges are just insane. It's the same thing with Carnage Chieftains, too. Carnage Chieftains are also really good, and just overall, it, it's going to free up Gem Sockets or free up um, the Shield to be more open for other things uh, that could be interesting on a minion build. But yeah. Hoping to try out something like uh like elementalist stuff looks pretty decent. 
Um, Necromancer stuff, we obviously got to see what changes with that. Even Occultist stuff looks really good with the gloves. Um, there's even some potential for Dominating Blow. I was never really a fan of Dominating Blow, especially Guardian Dominating Blow. But um, Blink Arrow, Mirror Arrow with uh, Dead Eye was fun. Hopefully that can be decent. Um, I wanted to play that a little bit last ladder, but I couldn't find a way to get the defenses on it without sacrificing too much damage. As well as um, I kind of wanted to get something like Wicked Ward on that for the ES recharge uh, not being interrupted whenever the uh, Devouring Diatom gets activated. But uh, never could find a way to make the defenses look good enough for me for Legions. Because uh, burst damage in Legions was kind of insane. Uh, so maybe that'll be good. Hopefully. And yeah. Outside of that, not much more to talk about. Um, I'll probably talk about the passives on Amulets next time. But for now, uh, this is the Uberly signing off. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.